Uh, hello everyone, this is Rosie from Cambodian S and at this moment I'm very excited as I'm being joined by two outstanding alumni of Visely. I bet many of you know what Visely is and are hoping to apply for it. That's why today I am bringing Hong Tri and uh, Sophia so that they can share their experience in the United States as well as the tips for the application process. Uh, thank you very thank much you. for uh, spending your time and being here with me today. So let's get straight into our discussion. So as I have known, uh, you have returned from the U.S. for two months, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, do you still miss the U.S. Eh? and what do you miss the most? And right now, do you feel like you haven't moved, moved on from U.S.A.? All right. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, actually, I miss a lot of things. I miss the constant exposure to new experiences and perspective, the diversity of cultures, languages, and also ideas. Mm -hmm. I also miss the uh, atmosphere of the uh, University of Texas at Austin uh, in Texas and other cities like New York, Philly, and Washington DC, where there was a lot of things to learn and discover around every corner. Especially, I do miss the sense of community of wisely staff um, fellows from other Southeast Asia countries and the people I met as we share and learn from one another. Mm -hmm. right, thank you. All right, so you were in Texas. And what about Sophia? Um, I'm from civil engagement team mm -hmm. from the University of Nebraska at Omaha and the experience is not quite different from uh, Hong Tri. Actually, uh, the most thing that I miss the most is uh, the experience and the people, the time that I spend there. Uh, the place that we visit, the campus, especially I miss the time that we walk to the campus every morning uh, with my fellow friends from different countries in uh, ASEAN countries. And also we miss, I miss the culture and the learning, you know, the learning experience there. So, fr but now, at the, the few weeks after coming back from the US, I still feel uh, relate to that, still mm -hmm. feel uh, like, missing that a lot and like and after after that from right now i don't have any feeling like this anymore i think it's mm -hmm. just a uh, really great experience of my life that i have opportunity to learn from the u.s and to uh, visit the u.s and l especially to learn about civic engagement mm -hmm. so i can say it's a experience once in a lifetime yeah. for both of you right Okay, so what prompted you to apply for Wisely? What are the motivation behind, behind it? Uh, actually, I decided to go for Wisely because my dream country when I was young was the United States. Mm -hmm. I hope to you know, uh, visit or study at least one in my lifetime. So I found Wisely is a prestigious program that happening in the United States allowing um, young leaders from Southeast Asia countries to explore, to learn and study in the United States. Moreover, I found an uh, incredible opportunity for me to learn, to grow and, you know, to achieve my dream. Especially, I, you know, want to uh, share our Cambodian rich culture to uh, other countries in from Southeast Asia and also in the United States to enhance the uh, relationship, the collaboration between Cambodia mm -hmm. and uh, ASEAN member countries as well as the United States. Yes, uh, as I know you apply for the entrepreneurship theme, yes. so why is that? Um, it is because my experience, my educational background and also what I want to be in the future mm -hmm. by addressing social issues um, to solve uh, the problem in my community and also my country and also the ASEAN as a whole. Mm -hmm. Especially, um, I came up with this idea because I see a lot of issues happening right now and I always want to, you know, to uh, solve this problem by uh, joining this program. And I hope that after joining this program, I have an ability I have competency, sorry, I have competency um, to implement and solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And what about Sophia? Why did you go for Wisely and uh, was it your first time applying? 
Yeah, it is my second time actually. I applied for the first time. I didn't go to the uh, interview, but the second time I got selected for this program. Mm -hmm. But the both up. Uh, both times I apply for a different theme actually. The first oh. time I apply for social entrepreneurship, mm. I did not get it. So I think what's wrong with my applicant? Why they don't select me? So back then, I decided that most of my experience is uh, related to civic engagement rather than oh. social entrepreneurship. So I switched from social entrepreneurship and applied the second time in uh, uh, civic engagement. Then uh, I get it. And if you ask me, well, what is the motivation behind applying for this uh, prestigious program? Uh, it is very famous program among uh, students, especially university students. If they're looking for, they're looking for uh, an opportunity to uh, exchange, uh, to study abroad. So this program is really uh, famous for them. And I get inspired. Actually, I get inspired by other fellow uh, alumni that they make the video. And mm -hmm. shout out to Bon Vivit. I, I watch Bon Vivit video actually, and they're really interesting me. And I, I should try. I should try it. But I never. I never think that I would get it actually. <laughs> but after I apply for the first time, I still dream about it. And then second time, I try again. And finally, I get it. And it is my dream come true. Since when I was young, I always wanted to learn and travel uh, to the world uh, mm -hmm. to learn from people uh, and, and acquire knowledge and then become a, one of the active youth and become the other role model for other young people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. two attempts for yeah. this application. All right, so let's talk about the application. So Hong Ti, can you share uh, what are the requirements and the, applica the application process? in this program. All right, thank you. Actually, there are two steps in the application process. Firstly, you need to fill out the application form. In that application form, there are many things that you are required to complete, like your educational background, your experiences, your achievement, and also volunteering, and just to name a few. And the most important thing is the two essays. So mm -hmm. it is very, very important here. So after completing the application process, uh, in the filling the application form. The second step is if you are selected as a shortlisted candidate, you will be invited for the interview. Mm -hmm. So by completing these two steps, you will be able to be the successful candidate of this program if yeah. you are got selected. So which uh, step was the hardest for you? I think the hardest part was the writing an essay. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because there are, I mean, there were only 250 words for us to write uh, per each essay. So, per essay. So, I need to, I mean, I had to be critically thinking of what should I wrote, sorry, of what should I write in the uh, writing. So, I spent a lot of time searching and reviewing um, from other, you know, uh, alumni uh, asking for, for consultation and also uh, ideas from them. And finally, I end up uh, spent uh, almost one week, I mean, one week to complete the application process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and what about the pay as uh, this, this was your second time. So, which part do you think like hard for you yeah uh, absolutely the first one is <laughs> the application uh, writing uh, because you know you have to compete with hundreds of applicants that they apply for this uh, program so when you got selected for the first stage I mean the application writing then you will go to the interview so you have a lot of chance to convince people that you are uh, a right applicant for that program and what make the first application writing stage, the difficult one, because we need to express ourselves, and like, like uh, Hong Hongtri mentioned about uh, writing, about mm -hmm. our own story. And like most people, they said how to write, they asked me how to write a successful uh, writing, that, that essay. And I, I actually answered that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because what, uh, because I think about this writing, uh, the essay writing is based on individual story that, the, that we, the best, 
on individual experience that we write to persuade people to uh, choose us as the applicant, as the candidate, as the fellow in that program. So everyone have the unique experience and everyone have the unique story. We have to think on writing about ourselves and especially express our experience, express our passion on changing, uh, making positive impact for the society. Mm. And especially you have to come up with a, a project that is uh, visible, doable, we can make it after we coming back. Um, we don't need to come up with like a really big project, but just an idea that is relevant to your passion, that is relevant to your experience. Okay. Yeah. And I, I also want to add to Wong Sophia. Actually, in the uh, writing process, it is important for you to think about yourself, mm -hmm. what you have done, what experience that uh, you think it was the most impactful for you, and also think about the uh, uh, set clear expectation in uh, for your future what you want to do after you know uh, coming back from the program and what you want to achieve in the future so i can say it is very important to to be yourself mm -hmm. believe in yourself and just do it yeah. just do it yeah yeah so like both of you mentioned uh, we should share our unique experience uh, right. while uh, doing the application so what if uh, someone says that like I don't really have the experience that is quite unique but I really want to go for wisely so then do you have any tip for those who are interested but they don't find that they have something unique and persuasive enough um, actually it is difficult to say or to find something unique yeah but uh, the thing is that uh, you need to recall what you have done so sometimes what you have done those things were very unique but you don't, I mean, you don't realize mm -hmm. that, is, that they are unique. Mm -hmm. So just try to, you know, explain what you have done uh, from yourself. I mean, from your own experience. For example, volunteering experience, uh, achievement from other activities or programs that they have joined, and uh, academic performance as well. So by explaining these uh, activities in the applicant's process, that's uh, also one of the best chance, uh, one of the best chance for them to, you know, uh, attract or persuade the uh, community as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to add up to that. Um, if they really wish to apply for that program, and if they know their their strengths and their weakness, so they can prepare. Actually, they don't need to go apply immediately. Mm -hmm. They need to have time to apply. Like I asked most of the fellow, they really attempt to get it. And then they, they, they plan it in advance, like one year or two years oh. before they apply. So in that time, if they really wish to uh, apply for that program, they need to build their credibility, meaning their experience, their volunteer experience, mm. and, and also they have to find themselves and prepare for that program. What are the requirements for that program? Actually, we talk about the requirement is not uh, so many requirements uh, that we cannot do. Actually, we, we can prepare for it. Uh, the first thing, English is uh, really important, so we have to uh, prepare for that. And uh, second thing is all the requirement document like passport, transcript, and all of that. And become one of the right applicant, the right fellow that they are looking for. By the right fellow, they are usually looking for the active youth who want to make impact and want to give back to their society. Mm -hmm. So if you know that I don't involve much in the society, so let's get involved by volunteering, by uh, participating in the youth uh, organization or initiative or something that is can make a positive impact for the community. And then you can uh, write that in your applicant and in the interview also you can show your strong passion for making uh, a change for society so they will give that opportunity mm. to you. Yeah. yeah, so then I really want to know what you write in your essay like your unique experience that you put on the paper so that uh, the committee like know that you are the right uh, part participant in this um, for me actually I have been uh, involving in some particular issue related to use I see some problem uh, happening to use right now just like they uh, difficult to choose the right major or something, prepare themselves for 
the university level or something that by that course I have created a lot of videos so that is from my passion and it's, I show that but it's not the project I link that project I link that passion to another project that I coming back and I want to like helping them uh, by doing mentorship program, some workshop, mm -hmm. and all of that. And if they look back to my experience and what I involved for the past two years, it all relate to youth. So by, by that, I think they, uh, I can persuade them to choose me. But if I can give the tips to everyone <laughs> that, oh, I write like that, and then you write uh, like this, you will get it. I, I don't think that they will get it because like I told you, I told and I mentioned previously that the story is the story, the passion, uh, it's based on individual uh, uniqueness. Mm -hmm. So everyone have their story and their passion, different passion. So they, they need to uh, write about it and find who they really are and what they're really passionate about and then they can persuade the uh, committee to choose them. Yeah. And what about Hong Tri? What made you unique? <laughs> right. <laughs> that is the hardest question as well. But uh, in the uh, writing process, I mean in the two essays writing, so the first one uh, requires us to, you know, express our uh, own experiences, you know, what is our uniqueness. So by that we can talk about our experiences and also how we can contribute to the program and how we will, you know, uh, take an opportunity that we get from the uh, wisely to help our country and also uh, the world as a whole. So because uh, my experience was, I mean, my, my experience uh, as mainly on the uh, startups and also the business. So I spent most of my, you know, uh, three to four years until now mm -hmm. uh, working on providing uh, mentoring to uh, startups, mm -hmm. uh, both ideas and stage and also uh, uh, early stage startup in Cambodia. Currently, I'm also working at one of the international NGO, uh, helping SMEs in rural area of Cambodia. Mm -hmm. So, what uh, I have brought in, my, I mean, what I have written in my applications, especially in the essays, integrate what I have been doing right now. So, it very relevant to to the theme of the program because the theme of the program is um, social entrepreneurship and economic development. So by aligning our experiences, our educational backgrounds, and to the goals of the program, it is you know, very important for us uh, to you know, connect it with each other. Mm -hmm. And the second part is the uh, second essay, is the um, you know, writing projects proposal. I came up with my projects proposals because of my experience as well as I have mentioned earlier. And I saw uh, a lot of issues in the uh, startup ecosystem in Cambodia, especially the uh, early stage startup. If you want to help startups to be sustainable in the future, to build a sustainable business for the future, startups uh, in their early stage, they need to be aware of sustainability. Uh, specifically, I can say the ESG. ESG here stands for environment, uh, social and governance. Mm -hmm. So why integrate this mindset, this principle into their startup DNA when they were young, I mean when they are sorry, when they are young, they are in the early stage. So in the future they will realize how the importance of the uh, sustainability sustainability is uh, for not only their startup and also for the uh, community and society as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in short it is important for us to, you know, uh, write based on our experience, uh, real world issues, and also uh, the uh, problem that we want to solve for the better uh, future of our country and also as the region as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You. So um, it seems like to make a successful application, like you have to uh, be clear with yourself, like know what you really want to do, and then you have the experience that are aligned to right. your goal. Okay, so talking about the interview process, right? There are two stages, right? Yeah. The application and the interview. So, um, is the stage hard for you to, you know, in order like, to get through? Uh, okay. so yeah, for me, yeah. I, I didn't re really <laughs> prepare a lot for the interview, actually, because uh, I know that they will ask the question that is, that just ask the follow-up question about the application mm. that we write. So we have to go back to our application and then read it again 
and and see if there are any any possible question that they will come up, and and real uh, in fact they ask like the question the follow up question relate to what we write and just dive deep into that like yeah. about our passion about our project, they want to make sure that oh it really you that writing that uh, essay, and is that really you that. Uh, make this project possible is that really your passion mm -hmm. so they just ap ask follow up question and that question is not uh, quite hard and by I remember they ask just a few questions that uh, I think they already prepare for that but most of the question are just follow up question mm -hmm. oh, so it's just like they just want to know more about you as yeah. a person in addition like to the thing that you write in application yeah. and what about Hong Tree? Uh, I think uh, the interview questions vary from one candidate to another candidate oh. you know <laughs> especially at the theme as well yeah, so yeah. for me uh, the theme of the social entrepreneurship and economic development uh, mostly they want to know about us uh, as I remember, uh, when I met them as the first time during the interview, they said they have read all what we have, you know, what we have written in the application process. So they didn't want to know about it anymore. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, and they asked um, mostly related to our experience uh, to align with our application as well. But I can say it's very different because, mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, we you know uh, propose one project so sometimes they they want to know another project do you, do we have another project okay. besides this one so it is difficult to expect the uh, answers sorry to expect the question from the uh, interviewer but the most important thing here is that to be yourself like i mentioned earlier understand yourself recall what you have done recall your experience and also um, have clearly expectation for your future so by that you you know the question is not beside you you know the question does not uh, outside sorry the question is not outside uh, your experience but mostly uh, related to your experience one more thing uh, please demonstrate your understanding of the um, you know uh, general knowledge general knowledge what do you yeah. mean by that by that here yeah, sometimes they want to know the diversity the leadership skills and more than this because as you can see in the title of this program young southeast asia leaders initiative initiative so mm. sometimes they want to know you know the meaning of the word leaders uh, you know uh, because this program join not only in join is not joined only by cambodians but also uh, the other fellows from other ASEAN countries members. So the difference religious, the different um, countries, different peoples, different ideas, that's called diversity. So they want to know more around the diversity or something. Else. Mm -hmm. So not only understanding about ourselves, what we want to do, but please demonstrate your understanding of the, uh, you know, a global issue in general no, like, like I mentioned. Yeah, so, so uh, as you a fellow in the civic engagement theme, so do you have the same experience as uh, Hong Tri? Yeah, well, like Hong Tri mentioned, uh, actually we have a ch this interview stage uh, is a chance for us to uh, share more about ourselves that we, you know, just 250 words in the writing essay is not defined who you really are. Right. But this, this time is uh, a chance for you to like tell them beside what you wrote and they will have a following up question like I said if we propose the, a project and then they will ask how uh, can you make that happen for example and we we didn't write any detail about that but we can come up with the detail about that project how you could make it happen mm -hmm. by telling them uh, face to face and beside uh, there was I remember the question they asked about diversity. Mm. Uh, yeah, they also asked about diversity because in the United States, they there are di diverse people, diverse culture. So they want to know I how our standing about uh, diversity if we got selected for the program, something like that. Oh, right. so I can say uh, they mostly focus on diversity, right? Like whether you can um, immerse yourself with the other people from different countries in Southeast Asia or not, is yeah. that right? Yeah, yes. yeah, so, um, in the US, uh, like, 
were uh, was it hard for you you know like in order to get yourself fam familiar with different people from different countries yeah um, interesting question you know i both feel like home when i was in the united states even for the first two weeks um, in the first week uh, i felt that everyone's very close to each other like a family until now uh, i i still miss them and yeah. we have a uh, chit chat and also uh, you know discussion sometime uh, oh. through whatsapp and other social media oh, so you still get in touch with them yes you are right mm -hmm. so i i can say it was not uh, hard for me you know to adopt or to uh, uh, make friends or mm -hmm. to live in the united states okay and so Pat, the same right yeah the same. <laughs> this program really build a sense of community among uh, southeast asian nation all the fellow from ASEAN country mm -hmm. and I remember I miss a lot about like we having a dinner together we share food we share culture and we uh, connect with each other communicate with each other but the first few I, I think that maybe I really find myself hard to connect with uh, most of the people oh. but why is that after, after that after that the people that I don't really think that I would connect with them and we start like seeing each other, learning together and mm -hmm. build that sense of, of community. Then we start, I start to keep connected with them up until now, we keep in touch with them like, through uh, WhatsApp mm -hmm. and then keep update about each other. Like one of my oh. friends from Brunei, he applied for a job and then I asked how, how, how does it now? And he still keep chatting with me, some of my friends from Vietnam, something like that. Mm -hmm. So it really builds uh, the friendship and also providing them with, uh, providing us with the, uh, a chance to learn from one another in that uh, ASEAN country. So as you mentioned that both of you like have to come up with the projects for the program. So uh, for Sophia, what projects uh, did you propose and what issues here that you want to work on? Uh, most likely, I uh, seen the uh, problems or challenge with youth, so uh, I come up with the ideas to help them by uh, making the mentoring uh, program and also creating a physical workshops. Uh, but we we need the resource to do that, mm. uh, so I decided to uh, still working it online, like what I do. Training so uh, the uh, training pro for program for them to. To for do what? For, for young people, for high school students. Um, like, their opportunity, especially for those who are in the rural area, they lack of information. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, in when they come to university or the opportunity to apply for any program abroad or something like that. As I'm one of them, I used to be one of them mm. while I was in the in Kandahar province, so I never know any program like this. And after coming to university, I don't. Uh, really know about the school, the major, or something like that, and yeah, I decide to uh, create videos instead and uh, or online seminar instead of making uh, the physical uh, events. But I hope to uh, implement that uh, project in the future. Okay, so uh, Hong Di, for you, uh, what is the most significant problem here in Cambodia that you really want to tackle and that your project is focused on? All right, thank you. Actually, I want to see the better, better future of our Cambodia and also the Asian region as a whole. And as working as working as a mentor and also uh, working in the, and also working in the international NGO, helping SME in Cambodia, especially uh, not only for youth but also in rural areas in Cambodia. I found the uh, problems that you know start up in Cambodia mostly they. Uh, lack of the understanding of the uh, sustainability mm. uh, to help them grow, to help them to be sustainable and impactful businesses for the future of Cambodia. That's why I came up with the projects of ESG mentoring program. Uh, ESG meaning uh, ESG meaning environment, govern ESG meaning environment, social and governance. So uh, if startup in Cambodia when they are young, they are in the early stage they are able to understand what is sustainability, what is the uh, you know, ESG particularly, so that they 
they will be able to integrate those uh, principles into their startup DNA from now. Uh, even it is difficult for them to implement in the present day because it requires a lot of resources, uh, technical skills, but at least they are aware of it. So when they are aware of it at the beginning, they can build you know, the future. Uh, when they have more resources, they become the big company, not the big, but the company that the company that have more resources mm -hmm. to implement it. So it's helpful for them, you know, uh, to, to implement it, which can help them to be sustainable while also giving positive social and environmental impact to uh, Cambodia and also the world as yeah. well. So how confident and optimistic are you that your project is going to be a success here okay, in Cambodia? Right. Um, currently, I am still working on it as a uh, this in this program, in Visali program, after we you know propose the research, I mean propose the project proposal, we need to working with two different universities. Mm -hmm. The first one in here in Cambodia. No, in the United States oh. and one uh, other and another university is called the University for Peace. So with this university, like I, I want to recall it again, the first one. Uh, the University of Texas at Austin and the second one, the University for Peace. So I am working uh, with my, uh, I am working on my project proposals with these two different universities. And currently it is in the process of pre reviewing and getting feedback. So next week I will, you know, uh, correct it. I mean, next week I will working on it again and submit it to and resubmit it to the, the, to the university yeah, as a final draft, mm -hmm. right? And I believe that it will work, you know, because of uh, this research proposal uh, will be evaluated by those universities uh, to make it more dynamic and also meaningful to implement. So uh, by following the guideline in the uh, uh, project proposals and the support from other relevant stakeholders and resources so that I, I, I think we we will be able to run it in Cambodia. Mm. Right. And for you, so Pia, uh, are you still in the process of implementing your project? Can you share with us your project? Actually, they uh, don't require us to implement it. Um, they require us to, like, uh, they actually encourage us to do it. Mm -hmm. But uh, for some project, we really need the resource to do it because we cannot uh, just do it by uh, using our own uh, resource, like money or anything. Um, so that um, some project they switch it to online or some people they also have the fund for that for, from the university but I actually unfortunately I didn't got uh, mm. selected for that fund uh, the fund from the university but they will have another fund for the Visely alumni I mean for all so uh, if people who wish to implement that project they can apply for that alumni fund uh, for, for all alumni from all years and and yes so for now i i don't uh, really uh, focus on it anymore it's like i said i just keep on doing uh, uh something mentorship or making videos uh, only on social media oh oh so um that means they have fun for the selected projects and then the other fun for the varsity alumni yeah. ah, i see so but, but the first the, the fun the first one is from the school, from the university. Uh, like I'm from the University of Nebraska, so they select uh, three uh, project, so people can like fellow in that for 2023. They can apply for that, just on specifically for fellow in University of Nebraska. So like for Hong Tri, he from University of Texas, so they have. Another competition among that. Oh, fellows. in the university that you yeah. were in. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, you spent the good five weeks in the USA. So I bet you have, like, you went to many different places in the States. So what lessons can you bring home? Mm three? All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a hard question for me as well. You know, um, experiencing the uh, countries that we have never been before mm -hmm. uh, it was a great chance to explore many things so i've been to uh, different uh, i mean i've been to four different states in the united states the first one is the uh, texas states 
uh, which was the uh, you know host university mm-hmm. that I've been there, the University of Texas at Austin. During this, um, I mean, in this university, I have learned a lot. Uh, not only from the classmic, uh, not only from the uh, classroom session, but also the uh, uh, different things in the university. For example, cultures and meet new people and uh, play sport and something more. Besides Texas, I've been to New York. That is the best place for me to experience and seeing the real United Nations oh. head office. So I got a chance to you know learn from the. Uh, uh, Presenter about the United States, sorry, about the United Nations and also the ESG goals at the time. Beside that, I been to the uh, Philly, where there was a lot of historical building and mm-hmm. historical. Um, I mean, historical. The old, uh, the oldest state in the USA, right? Philly. Right. Yeah. Okay. The oldest state in the USA at that time, and also the Washington D.C. where I exposed to you know, uh, learned a, a lot of. Uh, United States landmarks, especially the White House and yeah, something a lot. So uh, I got a lot of experiences and also activities from this program. Uh, not only, like I have mentioned, not only the academic sessions, but also cultural activity, uh, friendships, diverse people that have the you know like-minded individual that we can uh, achieve goal together. And I can use those experience to shape my perspective and influence my action uh, for uh, me in Cambodia. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes, you said you can use this experience to shape your perspective. So, what changes have you seen in yourself after coming back? Okay, all right. <laughs> That's a great question. You know, um, sometimes uh, the experience from the United States can influence us. For example, the way we live, the way we talk, uh, it might be different uh, from. I, I see myself different from. You know. Uh, uh, before I went to, to the United States and also uh, when I'm back. Uh, the way I talk, the way I uh, you know, connect with people. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the way I do my work, uh, I found that it's, it's more active than before. And uh, I always think about how I can contribute to my uh, society. How can I work toward positive change for my community? Because when I was there, like I have mentioned, Everything, almost everything that we have learned, not only uh, a classroom, uh, I mean, not only academic uh, session, not only the academic sessions, but also uh, cultural and friendship, and uh, also the way we contribute back to the society. Yeah, so you have become more active. Right. And so, Pei, as you're in the, the civic engagement team, so it's it's mostly focuses on uh, the people and the engagement of the people in this yeah. com- community, right? So when you were there, did you observe like what, like the people in the United States, uh, are they very active in their community compared to us here in Cambodia? Or what, what like can you share your experience there? Yeah, of course they are uh, really active and especially the difference between the uh, civic engagement in the United States is that um, they have resource uh, oh. for everyone who really yeah. want to make change for their society, make impact. So in the campus that I went to, the University of Nebraska, Omaha, they have uh, like a place where people in that community can come and work if they are non-profit organization or if they have an initiative that that, that initiative is making a uh, positive impact for their community so they can have that workspace and the support from the school as well. So this, this is like the different thing that if people really uh, want to make change for the society, they have resource uh, for to, to do that. And especially most people, they really, uh, I think they understand about uh, how they can be an active uh, citizen to help uh, their society. Like before, I went there, I don't think that what I do is making impact for society. Mm-hmm. But after I coming back, I, reala- I realized that what I uh, do is really making impact. It's not just uh, going out there to do the process or to make change, like the bigger change. But you can be a, just be a part of that change or you uh, just make change through social media or something like mm-hmm. that, like what I do. I make video. So people, young people, they watch my video. They uh, can 
try to study hard, they want to be like me, or they really uh, enjoy learning. So all of that is my goal. And I can see myself, yep, I'm actually making change. And I should tell people that making change be a part of the change is really important for society. Because society really need you, especially they really need young people. Okay, uh, you mentioned an interesting point, like if you want to make a change, it doesn't mean that you have to go out there to pr protest or anything, but you can make a small contribution. Yeah. So what, what are those small contributions that us as a citizen in one society you know, can make in order to bring an impact to our community? Um, actually, there are many ways that we can do that. Uh, first thing, we involved in the volunteerism mm -hmm. as a youth. Uh, for those who uh, they uh, used to volunteer to do something, I think they feel the sense of that uh, helping their society because they contribute back. And by another thing is if you cannot be the one who can like making bigger bigger change for society, just just be the citizen who like obey the law, yeah. right? <laughs> just obey the law. It's not like easy thing. Don't be the burden for society. It also you help making change for society as well. Beside that, as a youth, we are really powerful because um, when I go there, they really admire youth, mm. especially in ASEAN country. Youth contribute uh, about 65, around 65% of the total population. So that means that we need the fresh idea, the creative idea from youth. So we can contribute by joining uh, any discussion if they really if the government or some organization they really need us to be a part of that we can be a part of that by providing our ideas what our need because we are the future leader so just uh, like if you are student just try to study hard be a good citizen uh, obey the law <laughs> and if you can do anything spend your time helping other uh, like through volunteerism it is uh, helping to change our society. Yes, so uh, to you, like from your own perspective, uh, do you think that us uh, Cambodian youth are active enough in their community or uh, what are the lacking points that we need to address in order like, to help youth here to become more active and engaged in society? I think what we need is the awareness, uh, awareness. to those uh, youth. Uh, since uh, myself, Actually, I don't really know a lot about civic engagement before I went to the U.S. But after coming back, I feel, yeah, I am a part of it. But most, peop most young people, they don't really know how they can be a part of, uh, of that change or how they can make impact for society. So we need to uh, do the awareness or giving the chance and opportunity, providing the resource for them so that they can be a part of it. Uh, honestly, just from my thinking, I don't think that not. I don't think many people uh, really, really get into that. Uh, we need more people to make change for our society. We need more people, especially uh, young people. Okay, if I I understand correctly, you mean that. Uh, People right now, they don't really know what civic engagement is, so that's why they don't know the importance of getting involved in our community, is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, like, like in high school or something, uh, most people, they, they, don't, they think that by taking their time to participate in volunteer or something, is, oh, it's a, it's a useless waste of, time? Yeah, waste, yeah. waste of time or something like that. So we need to promote that more. That if they contribute to the society, they, they are a big change for their society. Mm -hmm. Like when I was in, uh, through back to the time when I was in high school, I take some time to uh, involve in school council, they have youth council. Mm -hmm. So we do some activity like uh, in the school. Uh, so I get that, that words from most people that they say, okay, you, you do that and you, you don't have a lot of time to focus on your study you only focus on like doing stuff that the teacher asks you to do. Yeah. And they, I think they really don't understand how uh, the, the importance uh, by participating uh, from youth. So I think we need more uh, awareness for them, especially for young people mm -hmm. in high school. They can spend some time beside uh, studying. In the classroom, yeah, in the go classroom, outside. Yeah, yeah. Go outside, exploring, 
is a is a good to be a part of our society. Mm -hmm. Interesting point. And Hong Tri, as you're mostly focused on startups, right? So, what startups in the USA like? Like, uh, is it this different from startup here in Cambodia? Such so as, can you share the lessons that you have learned from startup there, and whether it can be applied in Cambodian context or not? All right. Yeah. I think uh, startup between startup in Cambodia and the United States is not so different from each other. Um, but mostly they focus on, you know, in startup mean to test the idea, to find out is it really the needs of the customer? Is it really is the, the pain points of the customer that need to be addressed? So in the United States, uh, mostly they focus on understanding the customer pain point first mm. before producing uh, products or giving service. So it is very important to you know look at the uh, I can say customer centricity, which can help us to understand uh, customer better, so that we can apply our products. We can you know create our products that fits the customer pain point and solve their problem. Uh, in that essence, in Cambodia as well, you know uh, we see a lot of startup are increasing rapidly in the yeah, present day, that's right. and. There are a lot of ESO here. ESO, I mean ecosystem or entrepreneur support organizations that they provide support to startups in Cambodia, both mentoring program, uh, seed funding, or grant to you know, uh, develop the idea to test the market. So I feel that it's not uh, so much different from each other. But the thing is that uh, test the idea first, you know, understand the customer pain point first. And then you will be able to provide the valuable, you know, uh, uh, you will be able to provide the best solution and value uh, solutions uh, to the customer that yeah. address their problem. So in the U.S., before they come up with any startup, do they think of the social issues that they want to address also, or they just focus on like the need of the customers? I can say it depends on uh, different types of businesses. I can raise one example uh, from one of the youngest not the youngest, but from one of the young American woman entrepreneur, you know, uh, she came to share her experience regarding her businesses. Uh, before, before, she, before she started her startup, before she started her startup, she tried to engage with her audience first in social media to understand uh, the needs of the customer and what the customer want, you know, uh, so that uh, she could uh, produce or create the products that fit the f uh, that fit the feedbacks and also the demands from the from the mm. customer and also the market. Right. And some startup in the United States, they first look at uh, social issues. For example, uh, university students uh, and the uh, University of Texas at Austin that I, uh, you know, uh, studied there. Uh, students they have the uh, I mean lunch pad that a student can. Uh, propose the idea to solve the uh, social issues so that they can come up they can come up with the idea to solve the social issue problem I mean they can come up with the idea their startup idea mm -hmm. their business idea to solve the problem and they can get support from the uh, school for the mentoring advising as well mm -hmm. so uh, to you what do you think are the problems in Cambodia that startup um, is facing all right <laughs> yeah, uh, because of my experiences uh, involving in the uh, startup ecosystem in Cambodia, uh, I saw, I mean, I see many different challenges for them. The first one is the technical skill, because startup require not only the uh, business skill, but also technical skill combined together. And the second one is the, uh, you know, uh, mentoring program. So. Uh, Start up some some startup here in Cambodia. Uh, start with the uh, young people. So sometimes uh, they not sometimes, but most of the time they need someone or mentors to support them during the process of uh, testing the idea or running their startup. And the third one is the money. I can mm -hmm. say resource, specifically money, because without money they are very difficult, you know, uh, to to run or to test their idea. So money is also very important for them, you know, to support their uh, 
startup process and also testing their idea. Yeah, right. so youth have the ideas, but it's just that they don't like there are not enough resources for them in order to implement their ideas. Right, and mm. I can say in the present day, um, those startup can be those startup challenges can be solved by you know expose themselves to different competition programs mm, yeah. to you know uh, ESO like I have mentioned so that if they are competitive I mean enough uh, to compete with other startup or they can be the winner or sometimes their startup ideas are very very crucial for solving problems in society mm -hmm. they will get support from those organizations as well and because we can see the government right now uh, focus on you know helping startups and also SME in Cambodia yeah. because uh, in the DGP because uh, business contribute a lot to the GDP of Cambodia yeah. or we can say uh, SMEs can be a big bond of the uh, you know economic of Cambodia. Yeah. You spent five weeks in the United States so what experience have you encountered and the lessons that you think are valuable for you? Yeah, talking about the experience, uh, the five week in the U.S., it's a memorable experience. Um, I have a chance to uh, learn and expose to different culture, not only American culture, but also the culture from different country in ASEAN. Um, talking about culture, we have a, a a day where we call it as the cultural night, so people they can um, expose. They can display their culture through their traditional clothes or dancing or something like that. So that cultural night, we can expose our culture to one another, mm -hmm. so that American can learn about our culture and we can we share our culture to them and we can learn from uh, one each other. And another thing besides exposing to the culture, uh, the learning content or the academic session, it's a uh, really a uh, good experience for me since I have opportunity to learn in the uh, American University. And also we have one session with um, American students. So that, that session, uh, the professor also give us a chance to share about our country, like uh, about our political system, about the uh, with where they can come to Cambodia and visit. Mm -hmm. So we share about ourselves. Uh, so American uh, students, they can come learn from each country in ASEAN country. And beside that, uh, the study tour or site visit, it uh, really uh, like a fun experience. Uh, we have a chance to visit um, most of the historical place, uh, museum, especially to different states, like I've been to uh, South Dakota, and also oh. been to New York, uh, Washington, DC, and also in that academic, uh, not just only focus on academic session, sometimes we get on the bus and then we travel to the local community mm. to do some volunteer, to oh. uh, go to the nonprofit organization so that they can explain us about their uh, project, they can explain us about what they do. Um, yeah, it's really a uh, good experience to learn and that five weeks seems so short. <laughs> like. I want to be there more, you know. It, uh, the first week, it seems so long because uh, we don't know anyone yet. We feel that maybe I will feel uh, left out or something. But after the second week and the uh, third week, the fourth week, we feel it so fast because we really enjoy the process of learning and experiencing um, the culture and everything is new to us. Mm -hmm. uh, the way of living there, we have to be more independent. Like myself, I uh, go to Walmart, I go to yeah. uh, buy food myself, cook myself, which I don't really do a lot in uh, Cambodia. Yeah. But there we have to be more independent. And also another experience is the people there, some of the misconception that people think, that, oh, American, they might be uh, something like uh, have a mis understanding about their perception on Asia, Asia people. But actually they are friendly. It is from my observation, they are friendly. And also people in, my friend from different country in ASEAN, we also open to learn from one each other. I ask them a lot of questions about their country and they also they learn about other country. And we share food, 
uh, it's like a family. Actually, Visely is like a family. Mm. So this is a very uh, memorable experience for me in my life. Yes, uh, uh, you mentioned one point that you can also volunteer there while you're in the program. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Ah, so you uh, volunteer in the NTO or what? The local community? It's, it's just like a short volunteer for local community. Ah. Like they have, uh, they need us. I like really don't much. It's just one session, one morning. Then we have we have prepare arranging staff for them or something like that uh, ah. to experience. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So before we uh, conclude our discussion, I want you to share one word, one sentence to those who are watching and are really interested in Visely and really want to get selected for the program. So just one word or one sentence right. for them. All right. Thank you. So be yourself. Believe in yourself. Okay. And apply for the program. <laughs> Thank you. Fair. Uh, for those who really wish to apply for the program, just uh, go for it, apply. And if you don't get it for the first time, that's okay, apply uh, the second time. But please make sure to learn from your mistake and keep changes. And I wish everyone dream come true. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I hope uh, a success for your future project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.